So the cup from which I drink today, by virtue of a nurse's good guidance, is a medicinal herbal tea, throat coat. On the box it says, helps you sing it loud, say it proud, and stand up and be heard. May it be so. <laughs> Did you hear Bishop Michael Bruce Curry's wedding sermon yesterday at the royal wedding? And have you heard the responses to it that are emerging? According to reporters, there are many who were stunned, shocked, exasperated, pained, and troubled. Really, I think, they were just generally confused. They thought they had come to witness a personal relationship's culmination in committed love between two people made into a spectacle. But the bishop brought a different perspective. His was this. If the spark of love's power could bring two people together in marriage in this day and time, and if it could draw the attention of the whole world, what would it be like if this spark of love were turned into a flame that was sent round the world. Imagine the power and the results. His wedding sermon was really a Pentecost sermon. And so they were confused. Pentecost. Many Christians know little of it. And many who know of it think little of it think it unimportant or an irrelevant holiday in the church. Why compare it, do I dare, to Easter or Christmas? Well, if you're in any of these camps, listen up. Pentecost is big. It's fiery huge and it has hurricane strength force. Pentecost reminds us not simply of our birth, but of the very reason for our being, to bring unity, unity amidst all of the diversity of God's creation. What a call. On Pentecost, we celebrate the birthday of Christ Church. Some therefore think that Pentecost is a day in our distant past. But consider, birthdays are not confined to the day of our birth and the past, but are ongoing and celebrated annually. Birthdays are in our future. And my new granddaughter, Niall, born Friday, has yet to even celebrate one. Her birthdays are in her future, and so is our Pentecost. We are those people who are on a journey, and on this Sunday, when we celebrate our becoming an open and affirming congregation in the United Church of Christ, and remembering we are a just peace congregation in this denomination, we are in between Babel and Pentecost, and we are on the way to Pentecost. That's what this means. We are those on a journey. But from where have we started? From where have we come? Babel. And what is Babel? Nothing less than language, expression, culture, and a people misunderstood. And what does a lack of understanding too often lead to? Confusion. 
mistrust, fear, frustration, anger, conflict, even violent reactivity, so often seen in human history, in the past, in war, after war, after war, war still raging, still often seen, too often seen in our increasingly close-quartered, diverse global village. What is the Babel story? This place from which we've come? Well, originally this biblical story was told in word and voice by Hebrew nomads, nomads, to explain what it was like to encounter those who were more advanced, those first communities who were settled, settled with new ways and new arrangements and buildings, buildings and properties that often blocked the way and the life of those who lived the nomadic way. Their livelihoods were disrupted. Their lives were threatened. Their roots were closed. And no wonder it is that in their view, their God judged such settled communities who built towns and then cities that choked their way of life and threatened their very being. But of course, as things often go, those ancient Hebrew nomads eventually became settled themselves in a land of their own. And then the Babel story became interpreted differently. It became an explanation for the diversity of languages. They forgot their ancient ancestors' original perspective, interpretation, and conclusion about this being a God who judged, judged injustice turned into oppression by simply a difference in the way of life. And they would come, as they became settled, to be those who judged others themselves. Those Babylonians who had the audacity to build tall buildings into the heavens as if they were gods, forgetting once again that really what God really cared about was relations on the horizontal plane of earth. Oh, how convenient, since those Babylonians were rivals, and as they became more powerful, even enemies. Well, don't people do this all the time, even today? Twist interpretations of holy stories to justify their place and space and their use of power, and sometimes abuse, to preserve their place and space. And into all of this confusion and chaos and turn tragic arrangement comes Pentecost. What is Pentecost? It is the day when the Spirit descends, as like the first witnesses remember, flames and wind. It's when they are confronted amidst their confusion and the tragedy surrounding the misinterpretation of their Jesus. And they are all confronted by this with an experience of understanding. Understanding each other's words and language, which is a first step in beginning to understand each other's culture and perspective and ways and differences. Understanding represents the first baby step in coming to reach unity amidst diversity. And what are these two stories, Pentecost and Babel, when put together? Nothing less than stories that give us our coordinates on a scale, on a way, between Babel's life-threatening confusion and reactivity 
and Pentecost, understanding and unity. And we are on the way. They represent poles in a long-going battle to redeem the world for the kingdom of God. And maybe in this increasingly threatened technological society where power can be concentrated in the hands of few, maybe even the salvation of the whole world. In Pentecost Breakthrough, we have our marching orders. We're on the way to something much bigger than the church, something much bigger than being open and affirming inside these walls, something far greater than simply being a place of just peace. We're on the way to bringing these qualities outside these walls to the world, bringing qualities of God's divine ordering to all of Earth's chaos aiding and abetting God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What a purpose. What a mission. What a reason for our being. And you know, in the open and affirming process, I have witnessed your bringing these qualities to this day on which we celebrate who you have become. For amidst it all, you brought care in your aim and in your ways, in your goal and in your means. All along the way, I saw you treating one another with respect, treating all, not simply those whom you were concerned about by virtue of their same-sex orientation or their being persons of transgender, but your care and concern for those who were having difficulty with this, whether it was because they really had a debilitating personal experience or simply thought we already were, so why should we say it? You continually spoke carefully and respectfully, and you said regardless of where you are on your life's journey, with this particular issue, you are welcome here. Oh, if only this were the case in so many other arenas outside these walls, especially in places like Israel and Palestine and Gaza, in Russia, in Iran, in China, in Iraq, in North Korea. And sadly, in Washington, D.C. There is too much in all of these places, too much misuse of language, too much fostering of misunderstanding, too much devaluing of others, and ultimately demonizing of them. Oh, what a mission we have in the church, one that is so needed in our civil and uncivil society today. As Bishop Curry said, addressing his congregation as brothers and sisters preached, quoting Martin Luther King Jr. along the way, when love is the way, we will let justice roll down like a mighty stream and righteousness like an ever-flowing brook. When love is the way, poverty will become history when love is the way, the earth will be a sanctuary. When love is the way, we will lay down our swords and shields down by the riverside to study war no more. When love is the way, there's plenty good room, plenty good room for all of God's children, because when love is the way, we actually treat each other well, like we're actually family. Living in a time between Babel and Pentecost, between confusions, misunderstanding, and faith's understanding, between the world's potentially dying and the divine order's living, as we celebrate the churches, this churches, your having taken one step further along the way to Pentecost, let us also seriously consider where the church, this church, you may go next with your new settled pastor working with your currently settled pastor. And my wish 
but the fanning of the holy flames. Generate a refreshing landscape changing wind of Pentecost that will blow through these walls to the community around and have you all be where surely God wants you to be as his, or is it her, who cares, really, divine children. Amen.